Andrew. I'm Matt Dillon and welcome to another piping hot episode of Sipping the Tea where we what Miss Ari? Where we sip the tea and our guests <laughs> feel that tea. tea. Wait hold on my tea's <laughs> over here. <laughs> I left you hanging about 50 times in this in this live so I, I'll take it I'll take it and we have the puppies. The babies. Here. Who you got over What's there? I got Miss Mama. And little Glitty over here. Yes, honey. Yes. Well, it's time to do some introductions. The song that you just heard is by this queen right here, Masumi. She is such a developed and um, kind of like mysterious actress, songstress. There's so much about her that I just want to unravel in this conversation. Mm -hmm. She's the lead of the film Yakuza Princess, opposite Jonathan Reese Myers. She has a single out. And I'm sure she's got a bajillion other things that are lined up, ready to rock and roll. So welcome, my darling. Ready to spill Hi. some tea? Come on now. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh. Of course, Thank girl. you. It's nice to connect. Finally, yes, I was absolutely. like... Absolutely. Uh, well, we're going to just dive right on in. I can't believe, well, what's crazy is that we're already going to be done with 2021 and 22 is literally right around the corner. But let's just backtrack mm -hmm. a little bit. 2020 was such an interesting year for everybody. And looking back, what would you say were some positives that you took away personally and with your career? Uh, during the pandemic, you mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so for me, the movie was a whole new thing, you know, and I got married with my husband three days before I flew to Brazil to shoot the movie. Oh. So I had no time to process anything. You know, I was the lead of the movie. I was there for three months. I got married. Now I have a husband. <laughs> now this is... <laughs> Congrats, girl. Thank you so much. But I never thought I would get married. It was... Uh, having partnership wasn't something that I thought that I will have for myself. I thought I will be single and an artist for my entire life. So it was a time of um, processing everything. And it was time of healing for me. I realized that... Um, healing is such an important part of human life, you know, but I didn't really take the time and to really, I mean, I was always an introspective person, but I wanted to really go deep. I mean, deep, deep. And I spent the whole year basically doing that. And so I would say um, healing and um, processing. And at the end of the day, I realized balance was the key to my life. Yeah, that's so true. I love, I love the openness and the frankness of like, the introspective times that I think that a pandemic and, and all of that kind of taught everybody, that's been the greatest lesson. And I know for Ari, she's, she lives a, a life where she's always constantly searching for the truth and searching for, mm -hmm. you know, within herself. And it's like, and she's always like, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> and it's like, even journaling now. I'm into that journaling I'm, so hard now. Oh, awesome. By the way. Oh, I, like... I love it. But just hearing you talk now, Masumi, was like, it's kind of like the world, you, your wheels were kept spinning. And then it was kind of like, you had to find the clarity in the moment of that spin cycle. And that's kind of, it's very unique, Ari. Like it's, it kind of is like a little different to what we've heard because most people took stock and then it seems like Masumi was like, bang, 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 bang. And like, it was like, all right, now, now catch up with the internal thought process. Totally. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was like that. I mean, even shooting the movie, you know, I faced a lot of my insecurity, like 
my insecurity came, you know, to the front of the whole thing. And, and um, I mean, I overcame it through the movie, but then when I came Definitely back to did, my- Definitely did, girl. I watched <laughs> it under the, I, I watched it. I was like, girl, you kicked some out. We're going to get to the movie. But I was like, you oh, definitely overcame you. it. Oh, yeah. But but then when I um, came back home and I, when I was alone, I was like, what was that insecurity that I went through? You know, it's it's the type of insecurity that I thought I've overcome. You know, I've been an artist for a long time now. And wow, that's next level fear, next level insecurity. So then now I had to adjust to that and think about that. And so I feel like it's always this feeling of, oh, I thought I worked on that. Oh, no, it's coming up again. Okay, now it's next level. And then you work on that. And then it's the next level. And it kind of keeps going. I guess you get better at it. But well, I mean, I appreciate you just being so open, because, you know, a lot of times, especially as an artist in the entertainment industry, um, you know, it's almost like you're playing a character, you know what I mean? And Mm. most people are afraid to be vulnerable or say like, Ooh, I have to, I had to go through X, Y, and Z. So I really do appreciate, you know, for Mm -hmm. our audience who's watching and listening for you being so open, because I mean, I know there's somebody out there listening, you know, who's going to be like, wow, okay. I'm not the only person that, you know, Mm -hmm. or is, or, you know, that are working on these type of things. Um, Yeah. So thank you for being super open about that. Oh, thank you for listening to me. You know, I, I do feel like I was inspired too when the artist that I look up, looked up to opened up and said it. And then I was like, oh, I'm not alone with this anxiety and this depression or whatever. And it shouldn't be that way. I don't understand this persona that we have to create in order to protect ourselves. We're really disconnecting with people that way. We could really connect in a lot deeper level if we could be vulnerable. You know, I I understand it's not that easy, but (laughs) we're we're really going deep. But that word, I think there's strength in vulnerability. I think the strongest Mm -hmm. form of character build and strength is being vulnerable because that's when you're your most authentic. Like that's when the reach is like, there's nothing more pure than that. So I, Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, we're getting in early on this. I'm I'm getting a little, I'm getting sweaty. I'm getting sweaty. We always say, though, it's kind of like everyone we talk to when you get to know someone, especially when you're just kind of watching them behind social media, everyone always kind of, kind of walks away being like, wow, that was like a nice, like, whoo, like a little therapy session. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Um, it's, it's always, it's always. So I want to talk about the film because I, okay. I kind of came across the film and was like, who is this? Who is this woman? Who is this badass mm-hmm chick and like then kind of working with you and and your team with La Palm and a few other things it kind of came together that I was like oh my god like you kind of the depth of what how your involvement in the film and like the music every part of it you kind of were like nope I'm doing this I got this I got this I got this and I was like tell it tell our viewers who haven't seen the film about Yakuza Princess and maybe a parallel to the character to you as Masumi, because I, 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 I've I watched some interviews, but I definitely see some parallels and some synergy. So oh. let's start Let's start with the film first, so people get an idea of what they can expect. Right, okay, so Yakuza Princess is an action thriller movie, and it's about this orphan girl who uh, realized that she is um, the last heiress to the Yakuza syndicate. That's a huge Yakuza syndicate, and half of that syndicate wants me dead. They don't like the fact that I'm a female last heiress, and uh, this heiress, and that's this movie takes place in Brazil, and that's where I shot it. It's a Brazilian production company, and uh, I co-star. The co-star of my of me is Jonathan Rhys Meyers. I also had uh, got to work with um, Ihara Tsuyoshi and Eijiro Ozaki. They're both famous from um, uh, Letters of Yojima, I think, and other stuff, of course. And uh, yeah, so that's the gist of it. Was this? It's a good. Go ahead, Matt. No, it was like it's a great, it's a great film. I was, I was like pleasantly like shocked. I was like, this is like depth. Oh. There's depth to the story, which is mm. good. Thank yeah. you. Wow. So I was gonna ask you, was this the first um, time you ever kind of stepping into film? And kind of like, yeah, walk us through that that journey and that process. You know, because you were, you know, first a songstress and you know a singer and then the film mm-hmm. came along so was that your first film or have you done film before right so uh to answer your question yeah that was my first film I never done a film before because I never was 
instead of being an actress. Um, I remember, because my mom was a uh, teen actress, and I remember she was she got some roles and whatnot, and I asked her when I was in fourth grade, oh, do you think I would be a good actress? And she was like, no, don't do it. Just do your singing, be you. And when you're somebody you look up to, or like, no, nope, don't even think about it, it completely shuts you that or that option was not there. And yeah. so, although it was something that I was actually passionate about when I was young, I ruled, I, you know, how do you say, I crossed that out of my little diary. That out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, what brought me to United States was um, we had a 2011 Tohoku earthquake that you might know about. It was one of the largest earthquake that um, we've had the whole world, you know? And I was at the time in an underground bar and I was trapped there when the earthquake was happening and I couldn't come out because it was so big and I thought it was just going to crush us because it was an underground bar. And at the time I had this clarity of, oh, this is what I want to do. I want to do music. So then I moved to Los Angeles. I became a singer songwriter and my goal was to get signed by a manager as you know, a lot of uh, musicians would want. And um, I grinded hard for like seven years in LA and I had great opportunities too, but um, it, it's tough to be um, a female artist in LA. It's also tough to be an Asian American or Asian female, you know, because it, uh, I felt like a lot of times um, I was fetishized or sexualized before I could be uh, taken serious. So finally, this was about hmm, maybe like uh, four or five years ago, I had this uh, huge Japanese manager uh, um, who manages these big pop stars in Japan to reach out to me. And he basically wanted to sign me and make me a J-pop star in Japan. And, you know, what it entailed was that I would only play arena shows. And this was a moment where my parents could be proud. And, you know, this is, this was the moment I've been working so hard for, but then um, I went back to Japan for like four times and I finally realized, no, this is not what I want to do. Like, they're just going to create a certain image to sell me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write pop music. I'm not going to have creative um, control over my stuff. And I'm going to have to basically lie to these young females. Like this is what success is. And, you know, this is, you know, and, and truly that's just not the kind of artist that I wanted to be. I wanted to stick to my truth. So I walked away Good from that. You. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tough. Bold. That's yeah, <laughs> I love it's me. I love, I love me all the K. I love me all the pop from there. I was mm -hmm. like, but that is a bold move to make because it's like, mm -hmm. you, my God, that, that's sticking to your guns and your truth for sure. Wow. Right, right. But when you make big decisions, like to walk away from big opportunities like that, you always sort of think of, oh, what if, if, of what if I've done it right? And so that consumed me. That really did. And um because it was a legitimate offer, you know, everything. So then I went into this deep depression to the point where I couldn't sing anymore. The singing was so painful and I would um, go out and play gigs for people, not ever singing my song, but just covers. And even that was becoming hard. And that was the time I met my husband, Kenny Liu at a commercial shoot. And, uh, and he was telling me how he was a full-time actor. And I was like, hmm, does that exist in LA? Like, can you really do that? <laughs> so, so then it was purely, oh, you know, please tell me about it. And I met him and he suggested, Masumi, I think every art should come from a, a positive place of wanting to do it. It can't burn you out because then what is it that you're really doing, you know? Sure. Um yeah, being an artist, that's not how you should create. So he said, just do this act, go to the acting school that I'm going, take it for like a few months, and then maybe the fuel for writing music will come back. I honestly needed to get out of my funk. I was like, you know what? I'll do it. What the heck? I did that in three months into the acting classes, the school that he was going to as well. I got this um, opportunity to um, tape for Yakuza Princess self tape. And um, yeah, it was really strange because they already had a lead for that movie, but, um, and they were, they had already started shooting with a girl, but something wasn't going right. Uh -huh. And the pr Brazilian producer was, happened to be in a meeting with my Kenny Lou's manager. 
And Kenny Lou's manager, although he wasn't my manager, somehow he had my self tape. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but he had it and he just showed it on his iPhone. Like, hey, what about her? And then he was like, I want to have a meeting with her. We had a meeting with the producer. I taped the thing a, a week or two weeks later. I was told that I got the role and then wow. I had to leave in four days. So Insane. it was a yeah. but, the, but divine intervention because it's not like that happened. There's some divinity in the end part, right time, right place, had the self tape, but years of backstory that got you to the place that you could tackle. Unbelievable yeah. stories. Yeah. Which I love your story because it's so different. It's different than mm. the normal of um, most people who are like pushing, pushing, pushing to be, you know, an actor or an actress. And it just is kind of like, you know, it was your way of kind of finding yourself and getting back into the, your rhythm. And it's, I love stories like this because it's it's so interesting how life will take you in, different, in a different direction. You're pushing to do one thing, but life will be like, mm -hmm. nope, we're going to have you go this way. So I, I mean, I think that that's incredible, your story. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I never thought I would be, um, good at or I would be doing acting you know at all so um it's it's really interesting that you think that you know this is your passion in life is gonna blossom in this way and you really work hard and keep faith and then the way things turn out I mean that's the miracle part right that we mm -hmm. can't really foresee so yeah you can't see it you can't touch it but it is it's there yeah. it's there I, I, yeah. I strongly believe that and I'm like mm -hmm. I think that I think that the the story is incredible for for our listeners and our viewers because it's proof that it's like never give up even when the the ending is there it might and it, you just said it Ari it presents itself in something a different package and it's totally different right. Yeah, right. just and as, as an artist, you know, just because sometimes you think you're going um one way and I think when you surrender yourself and mm -hmm. you're kind of like, let me try something different or let me put my foot into something here. It's interesting how things will blossom when you're open mm -hmm. and willing to make it happen. Because sometimes I feel like we're putting our foot on the gas so hard to do one thing and push, 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 where you do get to that roadblock and you're like, okay, I need to try something different because right now this isn't working. So let me maybe try this route. And you just never know where that route's going to take you. Yeah, exactly. And I want to add on to that because when I uh, decided to go to this acting school and one month passed and it was pretty intense acting school. And so I thought if, and I, I was just putting all of my energy into that. So I said to myself, if I'm going to do this, I need a goal. I need to know what, like, what world do I see myself in? Like, what is possible for me? What do I believe is possible for me? Because if I'm not having this kind of uh, visual in my mind, then it's, it's really hard for me to make this time work because there was a lot of work that I was putting into it. So I said, okay, I think that I want to be an assassin as a lead. I want to see that because as a Japanese woman, I have not seen a lot of Japanese women take the lead in a uh, American movie, Hollywood movie. So then what I did was I, um, I really believe in uh, manifestation and visualization. I was just going to ask you that. Do you believe in right. manifestation? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for. We should rename months, this podcast manifestation <laughs> because we are all, I'm all about manifest big, 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 big dreams. Sorry oh to cut you off. Goodness. I was like, yeah. you're in a good company here. Okay. I was about to say, do you guys believe in manifestation? Mm -hmm. or? Oh, yeah. Very very much. Yeah. So, so I spent two months um, every morning, you know, for I don't even know how long. I mean, maybe sometimes it was 20 minutes. Sometimes it was an hour. But I spent my meditation just picturing myself being at the set you know, being in a certain costume, being, you know, having a certain energy to this character. And I didn't have any conversation with people about my limitations or like, oh, you know, because I'm Asian, there's not a role out there or not nothing. I completely believed that it was going to happen. And then two months after that, I had gotten um, uh, legacy, something legacy in Netflix, um, Jupiter's legacy. Sorry, I booked Jupiter's Legacy. Or I, got, I was put on hold for Jupiter's Legacy, and that was a, a assassin role. Wow. And and then right after that, it was about a week later is when I got Yakuza Princess. And so I basically had to um, 
you know, declined Jupiter's Legacy Netflix, which did really great. And I was kind of like, oh, I wish I could do both. But um, so so what I just wanted to say was that a lot of times, you know, um, we get passive of like, oh, you know, you grind, you grind, you grind, it's going to happen. Yes. But then you also have to believe that it's possible for you. You know, if you don't ever, if you can't even picture yourself in that lead role, yeah, like a lot of the Asian, yeah, I, I hear this, you know, and I think like, if you believe what the people say outside, and if they always say, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, how are you supposed to see yourself there? And if you don't see it there, then it's for sure not going to happen, you know, so. A <laughs> No, this oh, is this is you. so good. No, mm -hmm. for especially because in entertainment, um, you know, it's it's super difficult when people do get to these mm -hmm. roles. I mean, I've been there, you know, and especially living in LA. I mean, there's so many times where you get no, 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 and you mm -hmm. have to believe with because you know people are going to be like, oh, you know, you're not good at this, or you're not pretty enough, or you're not tall enough, or whatever the case is. But it yeah. is the truth, though, when you really believe in keep pushing forward and being like, no matter what happens, I'm going to get this. You will, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously yeah. everyone's timeline is different. It's never comes on our time, right? It's like mm -hmm. you want it today, but it's never going to happen today. You know, you have to wait for the right timing, but you know, thank you for yeah. sharing that because I know that there's someone either watching or listening who is sure. at a roadblock in the entertainment industry and being like, I, gosh, I kind of want to just like throw my hands up because I'm frustrated I'm mad and things are just not working out. So thank you. I mean, you've been dropping some amazing nuggets, girl. So thank you for yeah, thank, thank you for you. Uh, I was like it's, on the team, even right? in life though. I, I love that even in life that if you can't imagine yourself where you want to be in life, then how the hell do you think you're gonna, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I do believe hard work, blood, sweat, and tears plays a part because mm -hmm. manifestation mm -hmm. takes you so far. Mm -hmm. So I want to know then. Your music's in the movie too. Like she's working around the like. How did you blend it all together? You like bust power. She's like, so I'm gonna take the lead role. And you're gonna use my song. You're gonna do this, and we're gonna make it a whole thing. Right, right. Well, no, that was very organic too. Um, uh, so it was one of the other other thing I wanted to manifest: have my song be placed on a movie. That is something that took a really long time because I think I put that in my diary like two years ago but when I got to the um, Brazil they said oh I there's a karaoke scene and we want you to sing something but we don't know yet and um, I was like oh you don't know yet okay um, and then they didn't know that I had music um, you know already recorded so then I took that opportunity to be like oh you know you might not like it that's totally fine but here's music that you can you know okay. and I already know yeah. the song so then like because if it was a new song, then I have to learn it on top of the choreography, the fighting scenes that I'm learning, and yeah. then, you know, all of that. And so, and they found one of the songs, Run Baby Run, which basically is the entire movie. I'm running <laughs> from something the it whole time. Fit. I was like, it's a fit. It's a fit. It's super cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, that happened really organically. And uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's amazing. That's like a miracle to me, yeah. Um, so for someone, I mean, because you seem very goal oriented and you're a woman who knows exactly like what you want and, you know, where you see your life, where would you say, like, you see your career and, you mm -hmm. know, the next five years, like, what are your, what would you say she are some of the goals? <laughs> She's like, let me fit the tea while, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, while she manifests. The, she manifests. <laughs> okay, so. Um, you know, I thought of that question. I was like, yeah, what is it? And honestly, the most important thing to me, and this is going to be so basic, but I didn't grow up with a very stable family. So I didn't really know how it was like to have um, uh, safety, to have um, stability and to have, you know, um, that constant love that was supportive for me. And so for one of my biggest goals in life is that I want to create that family unit for my for my family. So in within in five years, I'm picturing myself having one or two kids, and I want to be able to be there for them by not sacrificing myself. And that means that I want to continue being an artist or put out my creative expression because I think that was one of the things that you know my parents couldn't balance. You know, and moving forward, I think for a lot of um, 
young mothers, artist mothers, you know, just because we become mothers doesn't mean we can't continue to be an artist. I mean, we have to empower ourselves. It's, I think it's a time of empowerment. So that's um, in five years, I would like to have built that foundation. Another thing that's really important for me is that um, I really care a lot about um, young females, especially in Japan, where in Japan, we don't have that gender equality much there yet. The concept is very old. And so I see a lot of the women still ah, feeling very powerless because of that, you know? So I would like to, um, the, the idea is kind of loose, but it's something I've been thinking about wanting to speak um, to the young uh, Japanese and beyond, hopefully, um, and, you know, one way or another. So those are the two things that I hope to happen. Oh, I, original, I, original, 100% original, because I'm like, we've interviewed, you'll be what, 152? 152, yeah. You'll be 152, and I have to say, top five of original, like, no bullshit, no Hollywood no. answer. Yeah. Because every like everyone would take the chance to like lay foundations to be like, I want to do this next career, career original. Because I'm like, you Aww. you're being true to oneself. It's like this has been such a like uplifting discussion and chat. And it's just really, really special. Yeah, no, seriously. I'm, I'm gonna sit my tea. No, <laughs> okay, especially when you talked about family, like that really hit. Home for me. Oh, girl, I was about to fall off my seat. I was like, I don't oh, think any the host here, I can't be having no tears, but it's that hits close to home because it's yeah. like, I know what it is to not be in a stable, None of us. stable family. <laughs> I was literally just telling Matt, I was like, I had a before breakdown you came on. right before you came on. I, it was like, I was like telling him, I was like this close. I'm like, I almost couldn't make it to sip in because I had a breakdown yesterday oh. dealing with stuff with family. So it's just kind of and look like, at what the universe gave, look what the universe brought to us yet again. When you, yes. when you're feeling a certain way, a discussion that like hits raw to the heart. And that to me is why, that's why we do this. Everyone's like, Oh, what is it? You're talking about gossip and stuff. I was like, no, we actually got, we end up going really, you know, sipping the tea is like spilling the tea. We, we talk about whatever feels mm. organic comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's beautiful. See, oh Ari, it's therapy. <laughs> yes, therapy it's, dolls. It's a therapy session, girl. Thank you. I'm yeah. just like, I feel like just talking to you is, is I feel even better. You just, you're such an uplifting person and mm -hmm. your story and just being super authentic, you know, and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Those are things that makes, I think why people are able to connect, you know, with certain people and why certain people have such great success is because they're staying true to themselves. And I mean, I really admire that about you. Very inspirational. Well, thank you so much. You're going to be you. a big star. I, yeah. well, I'm going to call it now. We're going to be able to <laughs> use this. You tell me when you want to win it, we'll manifest it. But, you know, th this girl has all the makings of, of, oh of huge stardom. And you got to get a TED Talk popping because that's how you're going to connect to that audience that you want to talk to. You got to get those. Yes. I, okay. I, come, I pay to listen to you talk, girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bro, it's, it's inspiring. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. But we know that you're okay. super busy, girl, and we don't want to we don't want to hold you. But before we decide to wrap out, this is your last chance to spill some tea, girl. Anything you want to tell um, our audience? Mm. Um, well, I'm, I'm really going to ask a fan question. Oh, okay. Um, you tell you talk, and I'll pull the fan okay. question up because it was a good one. Okay, okay. Um, I have one thing to say. I'm releasing a new song this week on Thursday, actually. Uh, what, and that this is dropping on Friday. <laughs> oh, this is when it it's dropping on Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday. Yeah, it's, it's going to actually air this Thursday. <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't even know when perfect. my show airs. Yes. <laughs> That's perfect. Oh my gosh. So on Thursday, when this is airing, I'm also releasing my new song. And it's sort of my rebirth, because I think before I sang a lot of music, wanting to be portrayed a certain way, which was very positive person and has everything together. But in reality, I have a lot of pain that I really wanted to just show it without covering. So this is my first song of stepping into my more authentic self. And it's called Cold Lips. So it would be great if you guys check it out, please. Oh, yes, we will be checking that out, girl. All right, I'm gonna read this okay. person's name out because it's actually a really good question. Cosmic Variant 20, which DC character would you play? 
if you had the opportunity to play like a the Marvel DC world, I guess. I thought that was cool based on on the film. Or would you not would you like go somewhere else and do another kind of role? Okay, so the only problem with that is that I didn't grow up because I grew up in Japan. I didn't grow up with Marvel World. So I actually don't know. Um it won't be cool to say, but I actually don't know any characters on Marvel. You create your own. Just be your own then. We're gonna create a whole new character for Marvel then. <laughs> yeah, I want an Asian character. That would Damn. be cool. Boom. Yes, yes. Asian badass without being needing to be sexual. Oh, I like that. that. I like that a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's super important to like have that. Yeah, I like that. Well, there's your answer, Cosmic Variant 20. Well, I'll tag, I'll tag the guy. I was like, you got some good questions. I was like, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Well, girl, we appreciate, you know, you coming on here, you know, taking your time to chat with us, spill some amazing tea, not gossip yes. tea, but some wisdom and inspiration. Um, I know it definitely inspired me. Um, but for people who are living under a rock or you want people to, you know, just keep following your journey, your music and everything got going on, where can everybody follow you at? Um, I Instagram, masumi.music would be where I'm most active, yes. Yeah. And then what about your music? Uh, that single, when we're yeah. dropping this episode, that single's out. And where can yeah, everybody yeah. stream your music? Spotify. Okay. Um, but everywhere, really. You know how it works. Yeah, all digital streaming platforms. So. <laughs> right. right. Mm -hmm. um, well, Mr. Matt, where can everybody follow you? You can follow me at Matt Dillon 1983 and my queen, my love, Miss Ariane. Where can we follow you? Fire, fire breather. <laughs> Everyone can follow me across the board at Ariane Andrew. And of course, follow Sipping the Tea at Sipping the Tea TV Show on Instagram. Sipping the Tea TV One on Twitter. And if you got any value, all we ask is that you share it with someone. So leave a comment, subscribe. And of course, you can listen to this on all streaming platforms. But we will catch you guys same time, same place of another episode of Sip of the Tea TV show. Hey. Got no room for the haters, them haters. Because I know that dreams come true. Yeah, you got the wrong number. Click.